She shone a spotlight on what life was like for a young Asian football, daft teenager, really. A teenage girl in the comedy Bend It Like Beckham. And now the award-winning director, Gurinder Chadha, has turned to an event in her family's history that split it in two. Yeah, her new film, Viceroy's House, tells the story of the 1947 partition of India through the eyes of its last British rulers and some of their 500 servants. Let's take a look. From now on, almost half of all guests at all occasions must be Indian. Yes, Mum. Also, I want to meet Indian women. Thank you. Sir Rodney Naidu, Pandit Nehru's sister. Mrs. Aruna Ali Asif, Raj Kumari Amrit Paul. Have you got that, Miss Noor? Yes, Mum. Here are the riders. I have a feeling, Pammy, that that might be the only hour of the day I ever get to spend with you. Each day is so crammed. Two poached eggs, tomato, sausages, tea. Lots to do. Darling, did you know that 92% of the population is illiterate? Good morning. And that one in five babies dies before they're four months old? Edwina, I could not be blessed with a more active, able wife, but sometimes we have to accept what we cannot change. But we can change a lot, Dickie. We really can, and we absolutely have to. In India's problems are not just political, they are social and economic. Almost half the babies born here die before they're five. That cannot be the legacy the British leave India after three centuries. We have enough time to improve the infrastructure so that when we that leave... That is not why we're here. Yes. You'll wear yourself out. I mean, I'll wear you out. Well, that's a little bit of a taster for you. What a fabulous film. Gurinder Chadha is here with us. Oh, thank you so much. Morning. Um, Good morning. Uh, it sort of start, started in some way uh, as a personal project, didn't this? Yes, it did. I did an episode of Who Do You Think You Are ten years ago and went back to my ancestral homeland that I'd never known growing up as a child in London. So to go back there for me was a big thing. But I was very reticent about going mm. because my ancestral homeland mm. in 1947 had become a new country called Pakistan. And all my family had had to leave as refugees so I was nervous but when I got there I got the most overwhelming welcome from people and I was amazed I mean they gave me a shawl they threw flower petals at me and they said you're our daughter you're welcome and going to the house the house that my grandfather built which my grandmother had left as a refugee with her small children um, there in that house now were other families who themselves had been refugees coming from the other side so it was that reality there mm. God. that I saw and said, right, I really need to do a film on partition. And, and so many families, like, like your own, have been affected by what happened in, in the 1940s. I wonder what the significance of, of making the film now is for, for you know, those who've lived through it and seen it. Well, a lot of people uh, like me, you know, our grandparents went mm. through it or our parents went through it and nobody wants to talk about it. But it's also a very important part of British history because it's about the last days of the British Raj. So it's really our shared history because it gives you some background into why people like me are here in mm. England. Uh, my association with England started 400 years ago when the East India Company went to India. So not a lot of people know about that. And sadly, uh, a teacher friend told me that a lot of children today don't even know that Britain had an empire because it's not taught in schools anymore. So if we don't know our past, then we can't really understand ourselves today, I think, as a nation. Well, you certainly started a conversation in our house uh, last <laughs> night. Um, and it is, you, you've done it from, a, uh, from sort of lots of different people's um, perspective as well, haven't you? Yes. I mean, it is a very unique, epic, um, historical film, very sumptuous. British costume dramas, that's what we do really mm -hmm. well in this mm -hmm. country. So it's, it's very handsome looking, um, but it is from a British Asian perspective, and yeah. that's a very unique perspective. There's only me in the whole world that is making films from that perspective at the moment. So being both British and Asian, I'm able to see all sides. So mm -hmm. I've tried to make a film that's actually very balanced and fair about everybody who was there at the last days of the Raj and looking at each person's uh, situation and agenda mm. and showing how the geopolitics of the time shaped what happened in those events, much like kind of what, what happens today in the world. You must feel like a bit of a trailblazer, don't you? I mean, you, you mentioned you're a, a female director, but a, a, a British female Asian director as well, who many will look up to. 
you know, that is one of the most important things for me is, is like now I'm going out talking about the film and going to cinemas all over the country. Mm. Um, um, I'm going to Bradford next week and Edinburgh and Leicester and Nottingham and all over. And it's when young people come up to me and they mm. go, oh, I've seen all your films. <laughs> Oh my God, I want to be like you. You know, that is really important to me because it's been 25 years since my first film, Bargy on the Beach, to today. Yeah. And I'm still the only Asian woman I was then and I am now. So it That's, gets. Is that frustrating? It's lonely, you oh. know. I want to see more films about, you know, ourselves from my perspective. Yeah. But I want other people to make. Um, so, yes, it is frustrating. And I feel that we're missing out on a lot of stories in the British film industry by not letting other people have mm. their voices. And it's not that people aren't trying. I think the BFI have some great initiatives towards mm. that. But I just think it's very hard to make a film, actually. And British audiences really need to understand that when a British filmmaker makes a film, they've got to come out and support us because our industry is being suffocated by Hollywood. Bums on seats, yeah. Important. Um, should we have another look at a piece of Viceroy sure. yeah. This is what happened when uh, Viceroy's Hindu servant Jeet yes. asked Alia, a Muslim working in the palace, for a dance. Let's have a look. Ooh. She doesn't want to dance. Watch what you're doing now. Huh? He wasn't doing anything. It's fine. You dance with your own kind. Bhai, please. My own kind. Calm down. Have some respect. Oh, 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 tell us what to do. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You really get a sense of, of the tension of, of parts of the film. Um, it is, you mentioned sumptuous. It is really sumptuous. And, and <laughs> filmed in the locations that this happened. Yes, we actually shot in uh, Viceroy's house, a beautiful building designed by Lutyens. Um, and it was to house the, the, the English the British in India for another 200 years, I'm sure, when he, when he, he finished it right. 17 years before um, independence. But I'm sure he thought the British were going to be there for a lot longer. But it's a very beautiful building. Um, and we also shot at the Maharaja of Jodhpur's palace uh, for all our interiors. So it's... You know, if you like that kind of British Raj, mm. um, you, you, it's, it's that movie. You get a very fabulous taste of opulent India. But at the same time, we focus on the servants mm. downstairs, the Mountbatten servants. So you get the ordinary story of the ordinary people like my grandmother and, and how they sort of uh, suffered, I guess, as decisions were being made mm. upstairs. It's a wonderful yeah. film, and what it was, 500 inside servants. Yes. <laughs> Living yeah. downstairs. With 5,000 in total, actually. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming You're to welcome. talk to us. Uh, talking you. about bums on seats, if you'd like to be one of those bums on a seat, uh, Vice Forest House will be in cinemas from Friday this week. It is.